we as a nation, as a people, need to grow up, get our feelings off our shoulders, and stop being so tender-hearted about these issues that are dividing us and get more focused on what's right, focusing on Jesus, focusing as he, Jesus told this uh, attorney, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, to follow in his teachings. And if we will do that, if we will do that, we will find the place that we need to be. And we will be able to minister to those around us in much better ways. Now the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia. So today, as we look at a very familiar story in Scripture, my, as I said before, my question for all of us today is, what would we have done? A lot of times we like to think that we would have done a certain thing, but often the immediate circumstances around us or whatever's going on around us sort of dictates our response, doesn't it? There are times we think we would have done something a special way or a certain way, and then there are times we find ourselves in a situation and we are sort of wondering, what should we do? How should we handle it? Now, as we go through this time in the study today, one of the things we're going to look at is how people reacted in a certain way because of the, the social norms of the day. Now, folks, we have some social norms of the day still today, don't we? And we're still trying to navigate some of those. Some of them are good and a lot of them probably not so good. And we're trying to figure out some of these. So join me, if you would, please, in Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 25, as we look at the, good, the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit life? Now, this is a lawyer, a teacher, someone who knows the law. But in an effort to sort of justify himself or maybe even catch Jesus and make Jesus stumble, he asks him this question, and he's an expert in the law of Moses. So remember that. So he's an expert in the tradition of the law. So this is an attempt to see what kind of response he's going to get. And for this individual who's asking the question, eternal life was not earned through Jesus Christ. He was a Jewish scholar. So he's asking these questions. What do I have to do? To have eternal life. Verse 26. What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? Jesus answered him by asking him a question, which Jesus does a lot to make him think. And remember, this guy he's talking to is a lawyer. And so he's going to meet Jesus right where he is. This guy's asking Jesus questions. Now Jesus is going to respond to him. And he, he answers in verse 27. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So he sort of puts it out there, doesn't he? Jesus returns this question back to this attorney and says, well, what do you think it means? And so he answers, to love. And this is, if we love the Lord, then we'll follow his teachings, and if we follow his teachings, then we will find salvation in Christ Jesus. And in verse 28, Jesus responds back to him, you're right. You answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. Because what he's trying to get him to understand is to love the Lord your God means to follow in his teachings. To love him with all that you are, with all that you have. To use the blessings he's given you to then turn around and bless others who also need a blessing. Now the attorney knew this from the Old Testament law. He knew that to love your God was the most important. The thing he struggled with was to love your God means to also love his son. And to understand that through His Son, we have this relationship of eternal life because, because of our faith and trust in Christ, we can find forgiveness for our sins. But being the good attorney He was, that wasn't enough for Him. Verse 29, He wanted to justify Himself. So He asked Jesus, Who's my neighbor? Think about that a minute. So He knows the Scripture says to love your neighbor as yourself. So let's trip Jesus up. So exactly who is my neighbor? And it's one that we can't necessarily define today because who is our neighbor? Now immediately we think geographically, we think about the people who live on either side of us and we think about them being our neighbors. But as we go through this study, what you're going to find out is your neighbor is anybody that you cross paths with and beyond. It's anybody that you come in contact with either through conversation or through just general passing somewhere, or anybody who lives within your community, not necessarily right next door. So he asked that question, who's my neighbor? Verse 30, Jesus replied, 
A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hand of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and they went away, leaving him half dead. Here's where things get interesting in verse 31. A priest happened to be going down that same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Ouch. A little incrimination on my part, right? The minister saw what was going on and didn't want to get involved. Passed over on the other side. So too, in verse 32, a Levite, a religious leader, a person who knows, was coming, son of Levi, one of the people who's part of the judgment of the, of the council of high priests, comes along, and when he comes to this place and saw him, he passed over on the other side. But then a Samaritan, from a person from Samaria, as he's traveled, comes where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him. He bandaged his wounds, he poured oil and wine, and then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn to take care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and he gave them to the innkeeper. It looked after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. Then the question comes, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him to go and do likewise. So in this simple story that Jesus is telling, the individuals who came along who should have been the ones to express tender care and mercy didn't. So even though we might sit here in the comfort of this place in 2022 and think, oh, well, if it had been me back then, you know what I would have done. But really, would we have? When you had a leader in the church and a leader in the church council, both come down the road and they see this man and they just don't want to get involved. Really, they just don't. And so they, not only do they pass by him, they go across the street and go down so that they don't have to even deal with him. These are people who knew better. And yet this is how they responded. So ask yourself, what would you have done? But then the Samaritan comes. Now why is this a big deal? This is why it's a big deal. This was a Jewish man who fell into the hands of the robbers, and the Samaritans did not like Jewish people. The Jewish people did not like Samaritans. They did not get along. There was conflict there. And in the process of seeing this story, what we see is someone who should have been an enemy, who should have been someone who absolutely hated the man who was injured, is the one who comes along and shares with him mercy and kindness. So the story flips. The people who should have done better, who should have known better, did not. And yet here comes this individual who saw it upon his heart to realize, here's a person in need. I have the ability to do something. I'm going to help. So he takes him. He bandages him up. He pours oil and wine on his wounds, and he takes care of him, gives him something to drink. And not only does that, he loads him up on his mule or his donkey, and he takes him into town takes him to the local hotel, whatever it may be, takes him in and pays for his place, pays for his room, pays to take care of him, and says, look, I've got to go. I'll come back this way a few weeks later. If I still owe you any money, I'll pay it. I'll take care of him. This person goes above and beyond to meet the needs of this individual who is in trouble, this individual who is having a hard time, physically injured, and Jesus is now explaining this story to this lawyer who's doing nothing more than trying to trip Jesus up. Well, who really is my neighbor? Well, you see this situation where you see two people who actually were the neighbors of this individual from the same tribe, from the same faith, from the same religious customs. They saw him and they ignored him. And then you see somebody come along who was not of the same faith tradition and not of the same faith community, who was not even liked by that faith community. And yet he was the one that stopped to give mercy and compassion to the individual in need. And so when Jesus turns around to the lawyer and he's telling him this story, he says, Now you, a leader, a wise man, a well-learned man, a man who knows the law, you need to go and do likewise. You need to go and be compassionate and merciful to those people who will be across your path from time to time. 
Oftentimes when ministers stand up here and preach sermons, they're not always directing them towards you. Sometimes they're directed towards us. Because it may be a struggle that we're going through, an effort or something that we need to learn. And I'm going to tell you that there have been times in my journey of faith where I've struggled with this because it's hard to know who to help and who not to help, right? Because you want to do the right thing, but yet you don't want to be an enabler. And I've struggled sometimes trying to figure out how do you fix that? Because the simple command that we're given by Jesus is to love, to have compassion, to have mercy. If someone asks for a drink of water, you give them a drink of water. And then the Lord's going to sort it all out in the end, right? But sometimes it's hard. And so I hope this morning that you'll begin to think about your journey and to begin to think about how it is that we are ministering to our neighbors. And I don't just mean the person who lives next door. But how are we ministering to the people that we see every day in the store, in the restaurants, in the convenience store, or while you're pumping gas? Because you and I both know that when you're out in public and you're around people, there are people around us who are hurting every day. I was sharing this morning you know, with the Sunday school class. I had a long discussion this past weekend with an individual who's fighting an illness. And it's a tough one. And what he's expressing to me in his journey was just that he's having some questions and some doubts and some struggles. And it was comforting for me to be able to sit and talk to him about the fact that, you know, it's okay. Because all of us in our journey of faith, sometimes we, we trip and we stumble and, and we question and we ask questions. But it's awesome to know that God can handle it. And in this situation, when I see two people who should have known better do exactly what they should not have done, and the one who was not expected to do the right thing stepped up, I'm thinking, hmm, what would I have done in that situation? How would I have been a source of encouragement to that individual who was in real need? This week, God may present to you an opportunity to walk humbly and then in some way minister to someone. And so my question for you this morning is, as you think about your own spiritual journey, what are you going to do? Now, my prayer is that all of us will see the situation. We will immediately address it. We'll step up and we'll do whatever it is that we can and that we're capable of, of, capable of doing to help this individual. That we won't do as those who knew better and just walk on by. So think about your journey of faith this morning and think about this story. Well, first of all, it's kind of a multi-level story because you have an individual in here that's that's really trying to question Jesus, not from a perspective that he wants to know more, but he actually wants to cause him to stumble. So Jesus' response back to him is this. You need to think about your path. You need to think about your journey and where you are and how you respond to individuals in need. And then when the lawyer begins to think about, well, here's what Scripture says. It says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. It basically says with everything that you have. And then to love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says, go and do likewise. To love God with all that we have and all that we are. And then to love our neighbors as ourselves. How do we handle that? How do we deal with that in modern society? Our nation is ripped right down the middle, more so now than it has been in my lifetime. How about yours? Neither side has anything good to say about the other. It's ripping people apart. I saw recently somebody posted something on social media, and it was just kind of a blatant statement. It wasn't anything you know, that was bad. It wasn't anything that was... Wrong with what they said, but man, did people turn it and go after them. One right after another. How dare you say da 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 and just And, and I knew the, the thought behind what the person had posted, and yet people just took offense at it. And I thought, man, we as a nation, as a people, need to grow up. Get our feelings off our shoulders and stop being so tender-hearted about these issues that are dividing us and get more focused on what's right, focusing on Jesus, focusing, as he, Jesus told this uh, attorney, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, to follow in his teachings. And if we will do that, if we will do that, we will find the place that we need to be. And we will be able to minister to those around us in much better ways. 
But Jesus has got to come first. Jesus has got to be our focus. Jesus has to be the one that helps us to navigate these difficult waters because in that process of of loving Jesus and serving Jesus out of devotion, then we have the opportunity to serve others and to provide for others. In the story of the Good Samaritan, you had two situations where people actually hated each other, not because of any particular reason, just because of who they were. Because of their nationalities, they hated each other. Because of their living conditions, where one lived on one side of the desert and one lived on the other, and they hated each other because of it. And yet, it was one of them who came through that process, and I was able to move that hate aside to meet the needs of someone who was in trouble. Christians, here we are with the opportunity to serve our loving God, to put everything else aside until we focus on Him and put Him first. And then you and I have the opportunity to serve Him and to meet the needs of others. So ask yourself again the question, what would you have done in that situation? Would you have crossed over to say, I'm just not going to get involved? Or would you have realized there was a need? And stepped up and provided all that you could because God had blessed you. And out of your abundance, you blessed someone else. It's an important message for all of us. It's an important word of encouragement for all of us today. Now realize that the concept behind this story was an individual's effort to, to trip Jesus up. But it didn't work. Because Jesus began to make him think about his own journey and began to make him think about the things that needed to come first and needed to take place first. And if we as individuals will love the Lord our God with all that we have and all that we are, he will provide a path for us and a direction for us. So folks, let's keep our eyes upon him this morning. Let's stay focused on who he is and on the message that he's called us to do. It's important. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for just a moment, please. We are being a little brief this morning, but we have a business meeting, and we want to encourage everybody to stay for the business meeting. But right now, what I want you to do is to think about your journey of faith and to think about your walk with Christ. And what we need to do in effort to step up to meet the needs of those around us. What direction should we follow in? What should be our path? To love the Lord our God with all that we are. With our heart, our mind, our soul. And then to love our neighbors as ourselves. Those individuals around us who we're going to cross paths with at some point. If we're thankful for the mercy that God has given us, then we need to share that mercy with others. I pray that's where we are today. And I pray that each one of us would be willing to stand and to do the right thing and to be like the Samaritan and to go to that individual who may not like us but yet needs us and show that love of God through serving others. Almighty God, thank you for the blessings of this day and for the opportunities that we have been given to come and to worship and to serve. Lord, thank you for this beautiful story. Thank you for reminding us, Father, that we need to search ourselves and to find out where we find ourselves on this journey. And we pray, God, that you would encourage us and inspire us and give us the strength to do the right thing, to minister out of the abundance of the blessings you've given us, to minister to those in needs who are around us to pray and to support and to love those who are our neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for this day and opportunity. Now we pray, Lord, that if someone here today is struggling with their relationship with God, we pray that they will begin to open their heart today and to receive you in. Father, maybe they've been believers for a while and they just need to be excited again about their faith. Bless and guide, Father, we pray. And after the service, I pray they'll just come by and share with me and let us celebrate your workings. For we know, God, you're still at work today. And we are so thankful for that today. Guide us now in this time of invitation. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
You've just heard the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia, online at conebaptist.com. That's C-O-A-N-Baptist.com.